What's up guys? Chris here. It's been a little while since I made a video, so I figured I would give you guys an update. There's been a lot of stuff going on. Uh, so, um, January 14th, I went, January 14th, I visited Missouri, <coughs> Southern Missouri, which is my hometown. Uh, Springfield, Branson, um, you know, uh, Springfield, Branson, Ozark area. Once they were part of an everlasting love, we were the lovers who strolled through green fields. So that's what I was doing, and it was a... <coughs> Sorry, you have to excuse me. My voice has got some snob snobbies in there. Um, so yeah, I visited my hometown in Springfield slash Ozark slash Branson-ish area. Uh, which reminds me, one second here. Ah, much better. So yeah, I visited my hometown. It was a good visit back home. Got to see all the family and friends that I hadn't seen in probably a year and a half or so. It's been a while since I've been back home. And uh, that was really great. So you saw a few pictures of it. It was a fun trip. And uh, I stayed there for, I stayed there from the 14th to the 24th, I think, or 13th to the 24th. It's about nine days, and which was um, a good amount of time to sort of do everything. And um, I'm probably going to go back in June, and hopefully this time I'll go back and I'll record some video and, and put it you know put it on here or something uh, but other than that some other stuff that's happened um, yesterday I went to Santa Cruz with some friends Marcelo and Chris uh, it was really fun we stopped at a few beaches along the way um, one beach we stopped at was called or I think it was the whole town actually it was called uh, Bonnie Dune or something like that and uh, really great beach um, here's some pictures of it and uh, I, you know, Santa Cruz is an awesome place to visit. I think it'd be even a cool place to live, but it's always good to just get out of the city. And Santa Cruz is just about an hour, hour and a half south of San Francisco, so it's pretty easy to get out there. Some other stuff that's happened recently, um, as far as the van goes, everything is still good. Uh, I actually had some troubles, and I had my very first... Uh, terrible van experience first TVE terrible van experience which is kind of a crazy story but I guess I'll tell you I gotta take a couple breaths before I tell the story Hopefully this is the last time I have to tell it because it's honestly it's tiring even it's tiring even thinking about the, the damn story. So here's what happened. So I was walking home from my friend Chris's house the other night. This was uh, the 31st of January. And uh, sorry about the rain, guys. I'm just gonna try to talk over it. But so, anyways, I'm walking home to my friend. I'm walking home from my friend Chris's house. I was parking in this park where I usually park. It's fine, usually. It's a really nice sort of suburban neighborhood type thing. And I've parked there, I mean, I've been parking there for the past three months and haven't had any trouble at all whatsoever. But uh, this particular night, I across from the van, I noticed there was these guys partying at their house, you know, having a good time, whatever. I was just, I minded my own business, kept walking. I heard some. I heard one of the guys mumble something about, "Oh, CIA, blah 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 blah," and I didn't. I didn't think he was talking about me or anything. I just thought maybe he was complaining about stuff that people complain about. So I just kept walking and kept walking, and then, you know, I got in my car and, and shut the door, and I was like, "Oh, they're they're drunk. They're not going to think anything about me just getting in the car and staying here. They'll they'll probably forget," which I think they did. But uh, you know, they were being noisy and they were listening to music really loudly and you know it didn't bother me at all I just I got back in the bed there and 
tried to go to sleep. It took a little while. Uh, eventually, one of the guys, probably about an hour later, one of the guys came around directly behind my car, got in his car, and started blaring music through the through the speakers. And it's like it's probably midnight, one o'clock at this time. So, you know, he was probably disturbing other people in the neighborhood, I would imagine. Uh, but nobody called the police or anything like that, at least that I know of, so I guess it didn't really bother anybody. Anyways, I managed to go to sleep eventually, probably around 1, 1.30. Next thing I know, I'm waking up to fingers sliding on the side of my van, just like the squeaky noises, you know, of fingers sliding across my van, and, you know, riding things in the dust and stuff like that. And uh, I don't know what to do. I'm just sitting here. I'm like, okay, well, clearly there's people outside my van doing weird things with my van. Uh, what should I do? And, you know, I could hear him kind of giggling and laughing, and I could tell that it was the same people that were across the street. And uh, so I'm like, okay, what should I do? What are these, what are these guys going to do? Um, you know, should I speak up? Should I, you know, should I mention that I'm, I'm here? Or maybe they don't know that I'm in the van. Um... So I kind of like quietly get up from the bed and I sort of look out beyond the curtain that I have hanging up and there's a guy writing fuck you on my window just right in the dust just not giving any shits whatsoever just fuck you right in the window. Uh, and honestly I'm just I, I probably should have just stayed quiet but I said you know I was just like hey guys what's going on I'm trying to sleep. And at that moment, uh, I th I'm, I, at this point, I'm pretty sure that there was three guys, right? Well, two of them back off, and I hear them say, Oh, sorry, man, sorry, we didn't know anybody was in there. And they just kind of backed off. But one of the guys, uh, who was quite a bit older than the other two, probably in his 40s, mid-40s, just goes nuts. He just goes nuts, and he starts punching the side of my van. Just, oh, you motherfucker, get the fuck out of here. What are you doing sleeping in your van? Get the fuck out of here. Just beating the side of my van as hard as he can. So I'm inside here. I have no insulation, and I'm just, I'm just like, freaking out because it's, like, the sound is amplified. I'm just stuck in this little metal box, and somebody is beating on the side of it like they're, like they're going to kick my ass, right? Okay, so this guy's beating on my van, right? I don't have any weapons or anything you know, in my van yet, or, I mean, not that I would use them even if I did, but, so I was just sitting here wondering, what the hell am I going to do, you know, like, freaking out, like, should I call 911, am I going to get in trouble for, for living in a van, like, is it worth, I mean, do I want to get my ass kicked, do I care, I mean, can I get a ticket and just, you know, maybe save my life, or, you know, should I just try to deal with these guys, or what, I, like, I don't know what to do. And this guy is just going off. Like, the other two are just kind of giggling and laughing because they think whatever he's doing is, is funny for some reason. And he's just, like, freaking out. He's punching the side of my van. Like, I'm wondering if he's, like, denting the side of it and stuff. And he's just, like, so angry. It's ridiculous. He's belligerently drunk and, like, I don't know. It was like he was, like, tripping out on some hard drugs or something. But, so eventually I'm like, okay... This guy is very angry, and, and then he accuses me of, like, being a pedophile. He's like, you're a fucking pedophile! Get the fuck out of here, you motherfucker! And, like, all this other stuff. And, like, you're living in a van, you're a pedophile! All this stuff, so... So, eventually, he kind of, like, backs off and stuff, and I'm... But he's still cussing and shit at me, and, and, and um... Yelling at me to get the fuck out of here and all that stuff, and so I'm, like... Wondering what I should do, right? He goes, uh, he starts heading back to his house and still cussing and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm thinking, okay, well, if I don't do something about this, it's just going to escalate. It's just going to get worse. He's going to come back with a crowbar, break my windows, and beat the shit out of me or something. So I decide that I'm going to try to make peace with the situation. Uh, I carefully open my door, and I've got my phone in my pocket, you know, just in case. And the way I figure it too is if, if they are going to attack me, I need to be able to run as fast as I can in any direction rather than staying here, like, stuck in a little box, you know, like, where they can just beat the shit out of me and I'm, where am I going to go if I'm stuck in a van? So, I get out and I nicely approach them. I say, hey guys, look, I'm sorry, you know, I didn't mean to, you know, I didn't mean to make anybody angry or, you know, cause any trouble. Like, I, I live in my van, I'm sleeping here. 
you know, that's, that's all there is to it. Like, I was sleeping, and, you know, you guys came up and started writing on the thing, and I'm not trying to cause any trouble or anything. And, you know, the two guys were like, oh, it's cool, man, don't worry, you know, he's had a bit to drink and stuff like that. And all the while, this other guy is, he's up, up the steps of his house just yelling, just like, fuck you, man, get the fuck out of here, man. And here's the, here's the thing. Uh, any normal situation where this was happening, I would totally just put the keys in, drive right out of there, just freaking gun it, just out of there, not, not a worry in the world. But, as you guys may know, my battery is effed, and I have to use, uh, the super start, and I had to use this, uh, super start power pack thing to start my car. Well, the super start was actually charging at my friend Chris's house, so even if I were to put the keys in the ignition, turn the keys, nothing would happen. It wouldn't even, it probably wouldn't even turn over at that point. So I was stuck. I mean, I could not drive away or anything like that. And uh, so this guy, I'm outside. This guy's yelling at me to get the fuck out of here. And I try to explain that to him. I try to say, hey, man, look, I'm going to I'm gonna get a jump tomorrow. I'm going to drive out. You'll never see me again. He says, I don't give a fuck. Get the fuck out of here. He's just, he won't have it. He won't even consider what I'm saying. He won't even listen to me. He's beyond any sort of uh, rational decision-making process at this point. There's, there's nothing. He's just like a, it's just him, just him. So, uh, anyways, you know, I'm, I'm like, okay, well, you know, guys, like, I, I can't move this van. I gotta stay here until, you know, tomorrow at least. And, and they're kind of cool. They're like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's all right. We understand, you know, it's cool. He's, he's had a lot to drink and stuff. And then, and then this, and then they say, uh, you know, you should have just stayed in your van though. And I was like, well, I was trying to explain what's going on. He's like, and they said, uh, you know, cause if he comes to chasing after you, we're going to have to help him kick your ass. And at this point, I'm like, what? You're going to have to help him kick my ass? Like, what, what is... what? I just could not. I just could not believe it. I was like, what Where? What world am I living in right now? What is... The, like, what did I do? Uh, I can't defend myself. Um, what do I do? I, I can't talk? Should I just go back in the van? What the fuck? And then, so I look over my shoulder to the right. And I see a police car. In the distance, I see the headlights on. So I'm thinking, oh, maybe somebody, or the, you know, the top lights. I see the top lights on. I'm thinking maybe somebody uh, phoned in the police, which is cool, which is perfect, actually. But I just glance over, and I try not to be too obvious about looking over there. And These two guys probably noticed me looking over, but I don't waste any time at all thinking about it. I just split. I just run straight for that cop car as fast as I can, just running. And I look back over my shoulder, and these three guys are just running up in their little house. Like, they just came back to reality. Oh, my God, there's police. We, we better get inside. We might, be, we might not be doing something we, you know, should be doing. And I'm just like, wow, you guys are f idiots. So they're running in the house, and I'm running this police car you know, right as fast as I can. And uh, I get to the police car. I'm, like, waving. I'm like, guys, help me. I, I need help. And they pull up and roll down their window. And, of course, I'm, I'm sort of in a panic. To, to explain myself, I was probably talking about 100 miles per hour, but I explain everything that's going on, you know, that I'm just, that I, you know, I'm sorry, like, I, I was sleeping in the van, it's fine, you know, if they want to give me a ticket, whatever, uh, and then I was minding my own business, and these guys, who I noticed were partying earlier, uh, came down and started sort of harassing me, and, you know, rubbing their fingers on my van, and, like, eventually beating my van when I asked them, you know, what was going on, and then I was trying to sleep. And the cop laughs in my face. He just laughs. He just laughs at me, you know. And I'm like dumbfounded. I'm like, wow, did I, did I just, did the cop, did I just, was I not explaining myself correctly? But this cop just laughs at me. And so I say, I'm like, okay, well, uh, no, this is serious. This is not a laughing matter. So he tells me that I'm basically a homeless man who's trying to tell people that they can't have a party inside their house. And I'm like, wow, this guy just completely misunderstood me. Like, yeah, I, I don't understand. That doesn't make any sense. And uh, so, so I say, you know, no, 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 no. I, I, I was minding my own business. I realized I'm not supposed to be sleeping in the van. So there's that. But I was sleeping, minding my own business. And these guys came up and started messing with my van. They started harassing me inside my van. Like, don't I have any sort of rights, like, inside my vehicle, maybe? Or, or like, just as a person, like, for self-defense, like just being harassed uh, and threatened uh, and he's just laughing at me 
He's just laughing in my face, like I'm like a worthless piece of scum. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just like, okay, I, this is not a laughing matter. And there's another police officer in the car who actually wasn't laughing, and he was actually, I could tell he was actually listening to what I was saying, and, you know, he says, oh, we're not laughing, and, you know, I point out, well, you know, he is laughing, because clearly he was laughing, and it just seemed so gross. I was just like, wow, I'm not even protected by the police officers, uh, you know, which is fine, I guess. You know, if I'm not paying for rent, you know, if that's the way that they see it, you know, that I don't... That I don't uh, deserve protection, you know, like anybody else, or, or maybe, you know, just the fact that there's crazy people going around, punching people's cars, screaming at uh, 2 o'clock in the morning, if that's not enough for them to at least just hang out and make sure everything's okay, I don't know what to do, you know, I don't know what to do. So, but anyways, um, and nothing against the police, but this was just a situation that was kind of effed up, and, uh, you know, I think I think it could have been handled a lot better. But anyways, uh, so I told him, I was like, you know, I would just leave, but I can't. My van needs a jump start. I'm going to get it tomorrow. And they said, okay, well, that's fine. You know, what do you want us to do? And I said, well, can you guys give me a jump, actually? And, you know, they couldn't do it. I don't know if it was because they didn't want to or if they didn't have, you know, the, the, the battery or something. If the cop car's battery was a little different. I don't know. Uh, but regardless, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to call my friends and have him come give me a jump. Would you guys mind waiting like five minutes, you know, just pulling around and just making sure that they don't run out with a crowbar and like beat my head in? And they did. So they just, they drove around and they waited and so eventually my friend Marcelo came around, gave me a jump and uh, and I was out of there and I parked far away from that place and I'm never gonna park there again. But uh, you know, it was, it was quite a night. It was pretty scary. And uh, I had trouble sleeping that night. I was like, wow, I can't believe that just happened. It seems unreal. And, um, you know, and I woke up the next day and it was it was kind of funny. I was like, wow, that doesn't even, that's, it's not even, it's just so weird. And I don't know what I should do about it, um, if anything, really. Um, the good thing is now I have a battery. Uh, thanks to my parents, you know, I, I told them this story. Uh, and they they sent me uh, some money to buy a battery and the van starts up right now it starts up perfectly so I'm I don't have a problem with it starting anymore and um, I just can't believe that happened though I mean, it was just ridiculous it's such a weird such a weird experience uh, and that's the first that's the first terrible van experience I've had and I don't think I'll have very many you know hopefully I don't know I, I gotta be a lot more discreet about the way that I live in my van and the way that I get in and get out and stuff like that, I guess. And where I park and stuff. Even more so than I was before. But, you know, it's gonna happen. You know, my friend Joel told me that, you know, you, you just gotta, have, you gotta expect this kind of stuff to happen if you live in a van. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to people. It's not the, it's not the traditional way of living, and, and, and because of that, people automatically think that you're, like, weird, or, like, something is, something's up, you know, like, clearly something's up with this person. If they're living in their van, like, either they're, they're low income, or they, they were kicked out of their house, or, like, they're, they're pedophiles, or they're, they're creeps, or stalkers, they're, they've got to be some sort of weird, weird person, you know, not, you know, if they're not living in a house, something's weird, you know. But it's just a it's just a different way to live. I'm doing the same things I was doing before. I'm just living in a van. I'm just sleeping in a van. I go places to eat. I go to school. I go to work. I sleep in the van. I don't pay for rent. I have more money to spend on things that I actually want to spend them on. You know, I don't know. That's that's basically that's the way I see it, at least. So But yeah, that's a pretty wild story, and I really want to do something about it. I'm not much of a revenge type person, but I feel like there's some sort of justification that should be done. I just don't know what to do. I've thought about maybe um, like writing writing out on a sheet of paper, or no, no, no. I, I thought about like uh, typing something out and printing it out, and then putting it on the doors like next to the house of the the gentleman that did this, just saying you know like. To whom it may concern, the person, you know, at so-and-so address could be dangerous and, uh, 
you know, if you heard loud noises and, and uh, disturbing noises, you know, the other night that, uh, that it came from this, this house, um, you know, and I'm not much of a person, I don't, I don't want to, like, publicly shame anybody, but this is, I mean, you know, if, if that happened to me, it could happen to anybody, you know, like, he could, uh, you know, he was obviously, like, belligerently drunk and, and just sort of out of his mind, so I don't see why, you know, I mean, he could do that to anybody. I, I, I don't want anybody else to experience that sort of, uh, that sort of shit, because that was crazy. But yeah, as far as other stuff goes, van-wise, um, I got some, I recently acquired a little bit of money, so I'm going to be putting up insulation soon. And I've been thinking about how I want to do the uh, interior of the van. Uh, I don't really want to have to cut the plywood, you know, for the ceiling here. I don't want to have to cut that for the ceiling and for the walls. So I'm thinking about maybe just getting some thin, um, some thin boards, you know, just like nice little, nice thin boards, not two by fours, something a little bit smaller than two by fours. Um, something about, maybe something about uh, a quarter of the size of a two by four, just very thin, long boards like that, and then like sort of stacking them on top of each other, and maybe like different different uh, angles and stuff like that, and just making it look kind of like interesting inside here. And then maybe after that, once I have the ceiling and the walls covered, and I can also leave some gaps for like little cubby holes and stuff. But then once I have the ceiling and the walls covered, possibly staining those and just making them look kind of nice and interesting, and then. Um, I'm thinking about, my van is just white on the outside, and I think I might add some stuff to it. Like, I don't know if you can make custom decals, but I'd like to just have, like, a, like some gradient squares or something. Like, just kind of a neat design or something, and then maybe, maybe something on the back with, like, a phone number and, like, video editing or something. You know, just something to sort of liven it up a little bit, because it's, I mean, even, like, if somebody graffiti, even if somebody, like, spray painted the side of my van, that would be... I mean, it would be, I don't know, if, actually, I don't know if I'd like that, but, you know, maybe some, like, little gradients, little gradient shapes, or, like, if the whole van was a gradient, that'd be cool. Like, it just fades from, like, blue to, you know, yellow or something, just the whole entire van. That might be kind of neat. I think that'd be kind of expensive, though. I think I could print out little uh, stickers or decals and then sort of customly make them whatever I want and, and have them on the van make them sort of whatever I want, you know, and put them on the van. But yeah, other than that, so insulation, uh, ceiling, and, and uh, you know, walls, those will be kind of interesting. Um, my handles for my windows are kind of effed. One of them I'm using a vice grip on, and uh, one of them is just, just doesn't really work very well. Both of the, both of the screws where the handle's supposed to go are completely uh, stripped away. So I'm going to get some new things of those. I'm going to get some new handles and some new screw pieces. Um, I am going to be having a Subscriber Sundays video this Sunday, which will be the, I don't know what date, but uh, let's see, today is like the 5th or 6th maybe, so maybe 8th, 9th, 10th, 7th, I don't know, but I'll have one of the, I'll have a Subscriber Sundays video up this Sunday. So if you have posted questions or have any specific questions, put them in the comments and I will get to them. And hopefully I don't miss any questions. Uh, yes, like I said, sorry I haven't made a video in a while, but there's just been a lot of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And going back home and uh, going to Santa Cruz and then uh, getting started with school and then uh, just having this crazy, terrible van experience. Uh, so if you, actually for the, for the van experience thing that I had, if you guys have any recommendations or, or something or on what I should do in that situation or if I should do anything at all and just maybe blow it off and, you know, regret not doing anything about it for the rest of my life, uh, let me know what you think. What would you do in that situation? What would you do if, uh, if that happened to you? So, guys, that's uh, about it. I will see you on Sunday and uh, I hope you have a good day. It's a nice rainy day here in the city. I'm parked at a Molly Stone's grocery store just because I couldn't find any anywhere else to park. And, uh, you know, just kind of chilling out. I got a 
go to work here in a little bit, so. Are gone now, parched by the sun, gone from the valley. 